A 19-year-old woman presents to your hematology clinic, having been referred by her primary care physician for long-standing fatigue. She reports that her fatigue is most severe after she menstruates and she does report that she suffers from extremely heavy bleeding during her menstrual cycle. Upon direct questioning, she also tells you that her gums often bleed when she brushes her teeth and that she has at least one nosebleed a month. Physical examination is notable for the minor bruises. Laboratory studies reveal a normal platelet count, normal prothrombin time, and normal activated partial thromboplastin time. However, she does have borderline anemia and a prolonged bleeding time. You begin to suspect that she may suffer from an autosomal recessive disorder associated with the deficiency of the glycoprotein 2B and 3A receptor. So by here, by the thromboplastin time, you should be in a position to answer this case. Extra wordings are always given for you because, you know, at least by seeing the deficiency of the glycoprotein 2B as well as 3A receptor, you can answer immediately what exactly the case we are talking about. Yes, it is a glansman thrombasthenia. There is another like uh, disorder which is like related to this uh, called as Bernard Saulier syndrome also, right? There are like two disorders, like there are like differences between these two also we will discuss now. So in this case, we will discuss about both the disorders and we'll try to identify the differentiating factors for the Glanzmann thrombasthenia and the Bernard Saulier syndrome over here. So the Glanzmann's one is the autosomal recessive as well as the Bernard Saulier, both are autosomal recessive disorders, but uh, the Glanzmann's one is due to the deficiency or we can say the dysfunction of the glycoprotein 2B, 3A receptor on the platelet surfaces. This is a pretty direct one because I gave the clue that is called the deficiency of the glycoprotein 2B as well as 3A over here on the platelet surface. And the Bernard Saulier syndrome, if you talk about, it is also an autosomal recessive disorder, mainly resulting in the absence or we can say or deficiency or decreased activity of the glycoprotein 1B receptor on the platelet surface. 2B as well as 3A is a glansman thrombasthenia. And the Bernard Saulier syndrome is the glycoprotein 1B receptor, deficiency of the glycoprotein 1B receptor on the platelet surface. This is the genetic defect what we can see in Glanzmann's as well as Bernard Saulier. If we talk about the pathophysiology, what exactly the role of this glycoprotein 2B as well as 3A receptor. So this complex of 2B as well as 3A receptor responsible for binding fibrinogen to the platelet surface. The glycoprotein 2B, 3A receptor complex responsible for the binding of the fibrinogen to the platelet surface. Now, when fibrinogen binds to the platelet surface, there will be a cross-linking between the adjacent platelets which can occur, hence platelet aggregation results. So finally, we can say that this glycoprotein 2B and 3A are responsible for the platelet aggregation. When there is a defect of this receptor complex, platelets unable to aggregate properly and bleeding results. This is what is the pathophysiology of the Glanzmann's. And if we talk specifically about the Bernard Saulier syndrome, it is a glycoprotein 1B receptor which is responsible for the binding of the von Willebrand factor to the platelet surface. Right, this 1B, VWF, von Willebrand factor to the platelet surface. So when the von Willebrand factor binds to the platelet, platelet adhesion to the injured endothelial surface occurs. So Glanzmann is the aggregation defect and the Bernard Saulier is the adhesion defect. So when there is a defect in the glycoprotein 1B receptor, platelet adhesion does not occur and the bleeding results. 
So quite opposite to each other. This is the main difference between the pathophysiology of the glansmans as well as the Bernard Sauliers. But both the cases, whether it is a glansmans or Bernard Sauliers, both the cases you will see excessive bleeding. Like uh, the bleeding in both the cases often manifested by the dental bleeding, easy bruising, epistaxis, menorrhagia, all the four symptoms, whatever I mentioned, are evident in both the cases like Glansman's as well as Bernard Sauliers. And there is a prolonged bleeding time in the lab findings in the Glansman's as well as prolonged bleeding time what you will see in the Bernard Sauliers also. So till now, we discussed about so many points about the Glansman's as well as Bernard Saulier. By seeing this case, for example, if I don't say that uh, it is associated the deficiency of the glycoprotein 2B3 receptor, how can you say that it is a Glansman's thrombosthenia and why not it is the Bernard Sauliers? Because in both the cases, you know, in one case, it is you don't know whether it is addition defect or aggregation defect, right? But if you talk about the clinical manifestation, clinical manifestations are the same for the both, like excessive bleeding, like dental bleeding, easily bruising, epistaxis, menorrhagia, all these things are seen. Lab findings also similar for both. There will be a prolonged bleeding time in both the cases for the glansmans as well as Bernard Sauliers. Now, can you tell me, anyone tell me the very important differentiating factor for this one? The important difference between what if we are not talking about uh, Bristocetin's test? Because we are not talking about the test, but only by seeing here, like, you know, we are not talking about the test. Okay, what the test reveals? I want a very, very common as well as important difference between these two, Glansman's as well as Bernard Sauliers. Remember, in the Glansman's, the platelet count is normal, but in the Bernard Sauliers, there is a low platelet count. Okay? Low platelet count. So that is what is the difference. Normal platelet count, even size doesn't matter. It's a count. Normal platelet count in the Glansman's as well as low platelet count in the Bernard Saulius. And for both the cases, the contraindication is avoid antiplatelet medication. And for both the cases, there is a supportive therapy for bleeding episodes like a platelet or red blood cell transfusions are indicated. So this is about the Glansman's as well as Bernard Saulius.